In this video, we want to talk about how to work with matrices in Python programming language using the NumPy package. So please stay tuned. So first of all, suppose that I want to define these two matrices. So in order to do so, first of all, we should import the NumPy package. So I import NumPy as in P. And then I simply type np.array because you want to create an array. And remember that matrices are a two-dimensional array because they have rows and columns. So they are two-dimensionals, row and columns. So that's it. And in order to define a matrix, I open a square bracket and you can see that PyCharm closes the square bracket automatically. And then I press enter. And here I should define the first row, which is 0, 1. And the second row is 2 and 3. And I want to name this matrix, let's say called A. As you can see, we have defined our matrix A. And now let's define this matrix, which is matrix B. So I simply type B, which is our matrix. And then I simply type np.array. And I open a square bracket. And you can see that PyCharm closes the square bracket automatically. And then I need to define the first row which is 1, 1, and the second row, which is 2 and 3. And now let's talk about how we can add these matrices. So that's very easy. So let's print. So we want to add A and B. So I simply type A plus B. So I'm going to add these two matrices. So if I run a code, you can see here is the result, which is the addition. And if I simply type A minus B, you can see that here is the subtraction. For example, as you can see, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, 2 minus 2 is 0, and 3 minus 3 is 0. So you can see it's correct. And also remember that, for example, if you simply type A plus 5, it means that we are adding 5 to every element in the A matrix. So if I run a code, you can see the result is 5, 6, 7, 8, which you can see that we have added 5 to each element in the matrix A. And also we can do the same thing for subtraction. So for example, if I simply type A minus five, it means that we are, we are going to subtract five from each element of matrix A. And for example, if I want to multiply every element of matrix A by two, I can simply write, I can simply type A times two. So if I run a code, you can see here is the result. And now let's talk about how we can multiply these two matrices. By saying multiplying these two matrices, I mean matrix multiplication. In order to do matrix multiplication, that's very easy. I can simply type A and I should put A at sign, so that's it, and B. So A at sign B. That's it, and if I run a code, you can see here is the matrix multiplication of A and B. And also, in order to do matrix multiplication, there is another way. You can simply use the NumPy package. So I can simply type np.matsmol, which is a function, and we can see that it stands for matrix multiplication. We want to multiply these two matrices, so I simply pass A and B because I want to multiply these two matrices. So that's it. If I print the result and if I run a code, you can see here is the result, which is exactly correct. But now if you want to do element-wise multiplication, not matrix multiplication, that's very easy. We can simply print A times B. This is an element-wise multiplication. So if I run a code, you can see here is the element-wise multiplication. You can see 0 times 1 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9. So now let's talk about how can we transpose a matrix. So suppose that I want to transpose the matrix A. So that's very simple. I can simply print A dot T. And remember that it should be capital T. So it means transpose. And now if I run the code, you can see here is the transpose of matrix A. And also, there is a second approach. We can simply use uh, the transpose function in the NumPy package. So I can simply type np.transpose because you want to transpose matrix A. And if I run a code, you can see again, that's exactly the same result. And now let's talk about how we can calculate the determinant of a matrix. So for example, suppose that I want to calculate the determinant of matrix A. So that's very simple. I can simply print so a little space, and then I simply type np, which is the NumPy package, the alias name for the NumPy package. And then I simply type linear algebra, 
because this NumPy package has different sections for doing a lot of stuff. For example, it has a section called random for doing random stuff. And also it has a linear algebra section, which is used for doing linear algebra stuff. So I want to use the linear algebra section of this NumPy package. And I want to use a function which is called DET, means determinants. So I want to calculate the determinants of matrix A. So now if I run the code, you can see here is the result, which is the determinants of matrix A. And you can see that it is true because zero times three is zero minus two times one, which is two. So minus two is this negative two. And if I want to calculate the inverse of a matrix, that's very easy. I can simply use the inverse function, INV. So I want to calculate the inverse of ma matrix A. So if I run a code, you can see here is the inverse, the inverse matrix of matrix A. And now let's talk about how can we calculate the eigenvalues and also eigenvectors of a matrix. So for example, suppose that I want to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of matrix A. So I can simply use np.linear algebra. I want to use the linear algebra section of the NumPy package. And then I want to use the EIJ, I means eigen, and I want to calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of matrix A. So it returns two outputs. The first one is the values, I mean the eigenvalues. And the second one is the vectors, I mean the eigenvectors. So now if I print the values, and also let's print the vectors. And now if I run a code, you can see that this is the first eigenvalue and the corresponding eigenvector is uh, this and the second eigenvalue is 3.5 and the corresponding eigenvector is uh, this. But you know there were a lot of cases, for example like principal component analysis and for example discriminant analysis, which we need to sort the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. By sorting eigenvalues I mean from larger to smaller. But now we want to sort the eigenvalues and their associated eigenvectors. So for example, this is larger and we want to put this first and then we want to put this after that because this is a larger eigenvalue. So we want to sort the eigenvalues, I mean from larger to smaller, and their associated eigenvectors. So for example, if I put this at first, I want to put the corresponding eigenvector as well at the first position. So let's do that. But now let's print something. So I simply print values.arg sort. So let's do that. And if I run the code, you can see here is the result. But was it, what does it mean? It means that when you sort the eigenvalues, so you can see these are our eigenvalues. So if you sort the eigenvalues in ascending order, by saying ascending order, I mean from smaller to larger, which is the default format in Python programming language. So if you sort the eigenvalues in ascending order, the first value would be the value at index zero, and the second value would be the value at index one. So if you want to sort the values of this array, we should put uh, the values in this order. I mean, we should first of all, we should put the value at index zero, and then we should put the value at index one in order to make something which is the sorted version of these values. So that's it. Here is the meaning of arg sort. So as you can see, the arg sort returns the corresponding index of the sorted values and by saying sorted values I mean sorted by ascending order in ascending order I mean so that's it and as you know we want to sort the values in descending order from larger to smallest so that's very easy we can reverse whatever we have get from ascending order so in order to reverse all this stuff we should do this we should put two semicolon and one, minus one. It means from the beginning all the way up to, to the end and with a step of minus one. So this will reverse all the stuff. So values.arg sort returns the corresponding index 
of the sorted values in ascending order, but if you want the descending order, so we should reverse it. So now if I run the code, you can see here is the result one and zero, which is the corresponding index for sorted values in descending order. So now let's store this in a variable, let's say called index. So I define a variable, let's say called index. So this is the corresponding index of the sorted values in descending order. And now we want to update our eigenvalues and eigenvectors using this index in descending order. So that's very easy. I can simply use values and then you want the values to be sorted in this order, I mean index. And then I store the results in a variable, let's say called values. So I'm updating the values. That's it. And also I want to update the vectors, all the rows, but which columns? The index columns. So from the vectors variable, from the vectors variable, we want all the rows, all the rows, but the order of the columns should be according to this index variable. That's it. So I store the result in a variable, let's say, called vectors. So as a matter of fact, I'm updating the vectors variable. So that's it. So now if I run a code, you can see that the eigenvalues and their associated eigenvectors has been sorted in descending order. As a matter of fact, we have sorted eigenvectors based on eigenvalues in descending order. Now I really suggest you to watch this video, which is on the screen now.